Hello everyone, and welcome back to Open Source Tonight. Today I want to show you a tool called DCP-O-Matic, and it allows you to create a digital cinema package, or a DCP, for delivery to a theater. Does any of us need to do that? Probably very few of us, but it's an open source tool, and I would love to deliver a movie to a theater someday, so theaters, just give me a call if you want one of my movies that probably will never be in theaters. Anyway, that's another story. Let's get into the computer. So, if we look over here at DCP Omatic, this is an open source tool as I've already alluded to. And so I'm going to open up a test here called test. And we're going to just resize this. And I like to check this outline content so I can see the very clear framing, but if we look at my DCP container, I can either select scope or flat. These are the officially supported recommended ways to package. So in my case, this was 16 by nine video and it is almost exactly the same as flat. Uh, it's not quite, but it's close. And flat is also referred to as 185 to one. There's also 239 to one, which is scope. And if we switch to scope, you'll see that this right now is actually going in and uh, putting bars on the left and right. Now, if I wanted to fix that, one option is, of course, just to actually do it correctly in the first place in the edit, but I can come over here and I can set to scale to that ratio. So we'll do 239. And I mean, it looks weird because it's stretching it up, but it is now technically compliant. In my case, we're going to go back to 185. And again, now that I've done that, I'm going to package it as 185, and there we go. Everything looks normal again. And so we can even play this. I'm not going to turn the audio on, but this is a recent Open Source Tonight video. I can jump around. All of that. And I can select my resolution, 2 or 4K. 24 frames is the standard. This was shot at 23.976, not true 24, but it up-converts for me. Um, this is another video. So in this case, I have two videos, which could be two different parts of a package. Didn't mean to do that. So that's how that works. And then we can come in here and we can set up other things. So the audio language, you can set the feature. Is it a, or it is a feature? You can set if it's something else. And as you can see, if I change this, you'll see up there that the naming convention automatically updates as this is standardized. So in this imaginary case, we just are packaging a feature film for release. Obviously, this is not a feature film, but you know, it's it's for demo purposes. We can open up the markers over here, and if we look at them here, you can see we have a couple that are set. First frame of end credits, which ironically enough, this is kind of there's really no end credits on this video in the traditional sense, like scrolling and stuff. So we have the scrolling or the moving credits start at this time code, and we have the first frame of end credits start at this time code, which is kind of ironic when you consider the fact that if we actually go all the way over there, I mean, yeah, this is technically, I guess, a, a copyright credit, but then I just put this as like the scrolling credits. I mean, again, it's... It's a test. Obviously, if it was a real movie, we'd have real end credits and it would be in a real theater and all that. So when you're ready to create your DCP, all you really have to do, you know, you can change all these other settings too, by the way, but all you really have to do when you want to create it, there's your six point, uh, or your 5.1 audio, six channels total. Let's say I got all this ready to go. You know, you can look at waveforms, whatever. But now let's say I got this all ready to go. I can go up here to make DCP and just hit my make DCP. Now you can see it's yelling at me about my audio levels saying I should reduce the gain. And I mean, I could come in here, for example, let's see, I think it's under the content, yeah. I can come in here and I can adjust the gain. You can also map things to the right channels, because uh, again, it's standard to be doing 5.1. Actually, I actually don't think I said that before, but it is standard. I can move stuff to the beginning of the reel. So this right now is not at the beginning. And you can see its position is here. And this one is at the beginning. So if I wanted them to be swapped, I could simply press the right buttons to do that. Okay. I can select whether it's 2D or 3D. I can crop the image if necessary. You can even add a fade in. Uh, you could come in here, for example, we could set this to the color is P3, which is normally the actual specification you would use for real theatrical release. Uh, however, 
this is a test and it's from Rec 709 footage, so we'll leave it there. But you can see here it says content rate is 23.976. DCP will run at 100.1% of the content speed, i.e. it's going to slightly speed it up and adjust the pitch of the audio to make sure that it works. And again, that's really imperceptible. So like I said, you know, we have something we can create. We can create KDMs. This is used if you're going to deliver to a actual cinema. And I actually, for fun, put in my local cinema's name here, my local theater's name. We only have one. And I've, I've blurred that out for obvious security reasons, considering they're close to where I live. But, um, you know, that being said, that is something I could do. So I could come in here and I could add a new one. So I could call it the cool place. Okay. And put in some notes here. The coolest place for watching a film like mine. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway, and then I can put in the emails here for all that. So if I go in here, I could go Vincent at real place dot org dot com dot tv dot film <laughs> you get the idea <laughs> you get the idea um and actually here i guess we'll go put a real one in vincent here at uh films dot vincent maggard dot com that's not actually a full real thing, but sure, we'll do it anyway. So now I could email myself that, and you can see now we have the cool place. I can check it. I can come in here, and I can actually tell it that the timing, so this when it's encrypted, we can enforce time. So let's say my movie comes out on the 26th. We're going to start on the 26th, and we're going to let it run until September the 30th, let's say. And you can set the time, and this timing is in 24-hour formatted time and needs to be set to the theater's time, from what I understand. Anyway, I just thought this was interesting software. Uh, you know, we can either write it to the documents, all this different stuff. Anyway, folks, I hope you enjoyed the video. I just thought this was interesting software, and... You know, as somebody that would love to be able to screen his short films and eventually even feature films one day, potentially in a theatrical environment, film festivals and the like, where you're going to use a digital cinema package, I think it'd be pretty cool to be able to do this. Um, and I might use this tool to create mine. Now, I will point out, by the way, up front that these files are huge. Uh, DCPs are actually a folder that contains a bunch of other files. And inside of it, different metadata, audio tracks, video tracks, all that. And the thing about it is, is that DCPs are huge because while the video is compressed, it's compressed very minimally and at a pretty high bit rate. The max for the official spec is 250 megabits per second, per second. And the audio is normally completely uncompressed. And so you can see how this adds up quick. Anyway, folks, let me know your thoughts about this software in the comments. I'd also be curious to know if any of you have used it before. And everybody, thanks for watching Open Source tonight. And until next time, thanks for watching. Goodbye, everybody. And action.